Welcome everybody to the Nightly News Podcast. This is Professor Paul Miller and I am sitting here today with a great number of people. Uh, number one, uh, well, I certainly can say some veterans to the podcast, uh, the Counseling Center Director, Tom Paul Mary. Tom, welcome back to the show. Thanks so much for having me again, Paul. Of course, it's always a pleasure. And like I said, you're, you're a pro at this now. Is this the fourth or fifth time you've been on? I believe this is number five, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's always it's always nice to have people, not that I don't like new people, I it's always always nice to have people who uh, have, have done this a time or two. It makes my job a little bit easier, which is helpful. Um, we're also being joined by uh, somebody who this is their second podcast, uh, Counseling Center intern Liz Yoder. Liz, welcome back to the show. Thank you very much for having me again. And of course, um, somebody who I have had the fortune of working with over the past couple of months, uh, someone who's new to the Nightly News Media Club from our new crop of students coming in from in our summer and fall terms, uh, Janelle Dulac. Janelle, it's such a pleasure to have you on. Is this your first ever podcast? Yes, it is. Well, it's always fun, and hopefully this will not be the last. Hopefully you enjoy it, and you continue <laughs> coming down every single term, and we will gladly have you on. You know, I try my best to get students on every single episode, sometimes for reasons, mainly because like if I have to do things over break, obviously students aren't here, but uh, it's it's my goal to have some, a student on every podcast just to get the experience and to, because it is nerve-wracking. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited still anyway, so. Well, that's good. Um, so I, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to having you. Let me ask you before we get started, you know, what was it about the nightly news that, that drew you to it? And you've, you've really jumped in with like a big splash at this point. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to anything that I do outside of my academic life, I like to dedicate myself to it. Um, whether it be drama or whether it be uh, the nightly news or anything along those lines, I just feel like it's good for me to get away from academic life and delve into something different. Well, the big selling point for, for me to, number one, our comm students is you have to build this experience while you're in college. I mean, we have the opportunity with the Nightly News to have uh, published work, and I just we just uh, hot off the presses our newest publication, and we mainly do that for students. Yes, it's nice to hand out to everybody so everybody can kind of see what we're doing, but this is a professionally done publication by a professional graphic designer, and you know, Professor Olympia and I are also working professionals, and it's it's an opportunity for our students to get work published, and we think it's a, it's a really awesome one. So we look forward to seeing you in there soon, Janelle. Absolutely. All right. Well, we're going to move on to talking with Tom and Liz about some of the amazing things going on in the Counseling Center for the fall term. The first thing I really want to talk about, Tom, is your continued work with Word Wednesday. And in fact, every week, every Wednesday between uh, week five and week 10 at 1230 in the CAF will be Word Wednesday. Uh, so, Tom, can we talk a little bit about uh, Word Wednesday thus far this term? How has the reception been? What are some of the topics that you've discussed? Share a little bit with us. Yeah, I'm actually going to defer to Liz on this only because one of the beautiful things that we've experienced as a result of her continuing into her third term with us through her internship is that I have actually not had to do anything with this program. <laughs> she has really taken it and ran with it and has her own group of students. So I'm going to ask her to do the, ex the heavy lifting and explaining yeah. on this one. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, Word Wednesday has had uh, a great start to the fall term. Um, we've had two sessions so far. Uh, the first week we talked about leadership, and uh, this previous week we talked about equality. Uh, both uh, sessions we've had a really great turnout of students, uh, a wide variety of different students coming each week. Um, lots of great feedback, some really good conversations, and um, it, it's exciting to see students learn something new. And I think the past two words have really brought out some new things, some new ideas and concepts that they're not quite, you know, haven't really experienced or had a conversation about. You know, why I think this is so interesting, and again, we've I've been to many of these, and the club has actually come as an entire club before. Maybe we could even, uh, maybe on like an off week or something, or when we have a club meeting, we could uh, either all come down, or maybe we could have you come to us, and we yeah. could do that. Mm -hmm. um, but what's interesting about the word Wednesdays is I personally think this is a lot of conversation that students probably don't get mm -hmm. in, in some of their other classes, but yet understanding some of these components is such an important part of being a well-rounded student. You know, and I give you this example. I hear, I've heard from students in the past, it's not 
frequent, but so, you know, some people tend to believe that some of the the classes that they take outside of their major are just kind of filler, or that you know, they they don't understand why they have to take these. Well, part of the reason is is because number one, employers want bachelor's degrees, and a bachelor's degree denotes that it's not just about that classwork in your major. It's also about being a well, well-rounded well student. So a communication class, a writing class, um, some of the other electives that you choose are helping to build that well-rounded student. And I think these Word Wednesdays also contribute to that. Mm-hmm. What would your comment be on that? Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, Tom and I went into a class uh, last semester and we did a Word uh, with that group. And that was really interesting. It was a different group of students that haven't participated in the usual Word Wednesday. Um, and that was, you know, an eye-opening experience because we did talk about some things that they don't get to talk about in their classroom. Um, but it also included their professor, so that added another layer to it where it was just you know, talking about, you know, the word that goes with what they're learning but in different ways and really having just an open conversation. Um, you know, it's, you know, non-judgmental. It's just, you know, the opportunity to really express, you know, what you know about this word. And sometimes they don't know a lot. And, you know, it's a learning process. Well, I want to talk to you about uh, one of the words specifically, leadership. This is something that we talk about a lot. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't really understand what leadership is. Um, I'm going to throw this to you, Janelle. Janelle, if I had to ask you that on the spot, as I'm doing, to define leadership, how would you define that? Um, When I was in uh, Air Force Junior ROTC, um, we actually had to define the difference between leadership and management. And I think that's something that a lot of people get confused. And to me, Um, what we were taught and what I believed in myself is like you lead people, you manage things. And that's where that difference comes in. And that's profound. (laughs) That's great. Yeah. (laughs) The Air Force is doing something right. Um, But yeah, so I think that it's, it's important to recognize that you don't treat people like objects. You're treating people like other people who you're kind of leading so that they can lead. So I think that's kind of a difference. One of the things I talk in a lot of my classes, so some some of my upper level classes, uh, some of the assignments that I have is they're doing resume, LinkedIn profile, you know, working out in the community, developing some of these skills. And I try to share with the students that I have in this class what leadership is and how you can show it. Because leadership is one of those traits, Liz, and and I would love to follow up with you about this, that that's what employers are looking for. They want you to be able to demonstrate on that resume, especially for entry level, that Mm -hmm. you've at some point shown or engaged in some type of leadership. Can you think of some ways that students might be able to exhibit leadership maybe on a resume or LinkedIn profile? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Um, I think, you know, leadership can look you know, different for a college student. Um, you know, leadership could be, you know, taking the lead in a club that you're participating in, um, really putting in the effort to to show that you can lead your peers and coming up with new ideas or leading, you know, that club session in, in coming up with goals for the club. They can show it in athletics too, being a leader of the of their team, taking that stand to show um, their peers that, you know, that they can be a trustworthy uh, student and that, you know, they can, they have what it takes to, to lead the group of the, lead the, the team together. Well, for example, one of the things I always say is, is try to become a club officer or, or in the case of Janelle being in multiple clubs, um, <laughs> you know, why that's so important is number one, you don't just become the vice president, the secretary, the treasurer, the president of these clubs without previously illustrating some type of commitment and dedication to that club. So, for example, our current president, and I'm going to be so mad and upset when this gentleman leaves. I almost am thinking about bailing him so he can't leave. Of course, I would <laughs> never do that. Of course, I'm just joking. Brian Christiana. I've worked with Brian for several years, and what he's done to elevate himself is is much like, you know, what you're doing in, in not only with the Nightly News, but in other clubs. You're coming, you're hitting the ground running, you're getting involved, and then by a seniority, you're going to move into some of these leadership positions. And to me, that's one of the key areas that college students need to focus on. So, but it's not just club leadership, Liz, Mm -hmm. you'd mentioned sports and athletics. And this is something that a lot of students don't really necessarily think about. 
I have spoken. Part of my job as a communication coordinator is that I work with people in the community, employers, and they are constantly trying. I'm constantly talking to them about what they're looking for from an entry level employee. And one of the number one skills that I always hear is leadership. And then I talk to them. You know, what are the things that you're looking for on a resume that will demonstrate that? And they always say athletics, because when you're in athletics leaders emerge and when you are in athletics over a period of time not only are you engaging in teamwork but there's also a leadership component there as well so uh, i love the word wednesday i'm so glad that this is, has been continued and not only revamped but certainly improved i mean the, the number of people the way that you're doing this i just absolutely love this and i'm sure that you know you've put word wednesday in a very good spot liz and tom so oh, thank, thank you very much for that again word wednesday 12 30 every wednesday from weeks 5 through 10 this week through the next to last week of the term and that's in the calf every week with liz and tom all right, we're going to move on to a few other things that are coming up. Tom, one of the things that you'd mentioned uh, the last time you were on is one of the things that you do every term is you provide chair massages during weeks 6 and 10 with Ian. Uh, can you tell us some of the feedback you've gotten from some of the students about that opportunity? Um, students and staff continue to report that they enjoy having him on campus. Um, he does really good work. He is someone that has an established relationship with the college. So, yeah, that's one of those things that as long as everyone's telling me that they would continue to like the service, it's just a matter of making sure that we're able to accommodate him. So, yeah, he'll be coming back for week 6 and 10. He'll be in Lancaster as well during week 10. Um, he's continuing to get busy. His, his practice is doing really, really well. So I'm really glad that we're able to have him and that he's still willing to include us in his, in his work. Yeah. I, I love the fact that it's free. Mm -hmm. If any of you have ever gone and, and went to like a spa to get a, a massage, they are so expensive. Mm -hmm. You're talking about like 50, 60 bucks an hour. Yeah, he charges 65 and he's totally worth it. But yeah. <laughs> but to be able to get it for free in our lobbies and often, and I'm sure that you plan it this way intentionally, in the most stressful of weeks mm -hmm. <laughs> that uh, he's here. Uh, so I did want to point out that Ian will be back on November 13th and 14th and Dece uh, December 11th and 12th. Uh, and he sets up in the tech lobby and it's sort of first come, first serve, Tom? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, certainly if, if you're feeling stressed out that those two weeks, please stop by and, and see Ian. Liz, I wanted to talk to you also about a training coming up that uh, you are doing with uh, uh, the Advising Center. Mm -hmm. uh, that's going to be on November 22nd from 1230 to 130. Uh, tell us a little bit more about this workshop. Yeah. So Michelle and I will be doing this training on autism awareness. Um, it's really to bring some some information to staff and faculty about what autism is, what it looks like, and how they can support students who are diagnosed with autism in the classroom. Kind of give them some tips on best practices and ways that they can kind of just be supportive for that student and guide them through their uh, Central Penn experience. What I find, and, and I've shared this with, with you, the both of you before, um, my son is on the autism spectrum. Unfortunately, I don't believe that higher education is, is, is in his future, uh, but I think that that illustrates one of the biggest concerns that I have as a father of someone on the autism spectrum is that the – and it's called the spectrum for a reason. Mm -hmm. Why it's called the spectrum is there are so many different levels. You can go from you know, college ready, and honestly, I've, I've met students who are – some of the smartest people I've ever met who are diagnosed with autism and then all the way down to totally nonverbal. Uh, my son's sort of more in the middle, does, does talk, but struggles to communicate. Um, maybe that may not make sense to you, but you know, he doesn't initiate conversation. Um, you know, it's, it, there's a lot that goes into it. And that to me is the biggest issue is that so many people, and I, I know they don't mean to offend, and maybe we're dating ourselves here, but refer to Rain Man, Mm -hmm. Now, it's not to say that uh, there are not people that, that illustrate those types of characteristics that Dustin Hoffman was, but for someone to associate everyone with autism or most with autism to something like that is, is very problematic in our society. And I appreciate the fact that you're doing this workshop to help address this. Uh, where did this come from? Where, where did the idea for this training kind of manifest itself? 
Uh, I'll jump in on that. So this has been something that Michelle Wattel and myself and a couple of other kind of student services leaders, we've been noticing like an increase in the number of students that are self-reporting being on the spectrum. We're noticing an increase in faculty desire to say like, hey, we really want everybody to feel included. What are some of the best ways to do this? So we kind of all got together and looked at a couple of different practical but also like relational strategies that we can really use to help empower our staff and faculty to make sure that nobody falls through the cracks. Um, one of the things, you know, even as you were talking about the example of Rain Man, so there's a saying in the behavioral health world that if you know one person with autism, you know one person with autism. Like it looks that way for that person, but that is not representative of everybody else. A way that I sometimes explain this to clients and families is folk with autism spectrum disorder have what's called a scattered skill profile. So what that means is that they might be doing profoundly well um, in certain areas of their life, but not really that well at all in other areas of their life. And the differences can be really stark and dramatic. So there are cases where what you're talking about in Rain Man of like what's called savantism, this idea of hyper-excelling in a particular subject matter. So like math, for example, or spatial reasoning. But at the same token, that person doesn't know how to have a conversation or doesn't ask for help or doesn't know how to self-assess, I need help with something. So it's about creating like awareness um, for members of our community to just be able to maybe help people bridge some of those gaps. Uh, and I, I couldn't be more supportive of this, and I'm so looking forward to this. And if there's any way that you would even want me to maybe even talk for a minute about my experiences, mm -hmm. I'd be happy to do that. And I'm not by no means, you know, uh, nominating myself, but certainly if that would help, <laughs> if that would help with anything, I'd be happy to talk about even just some of my experiences. But, but to me, and, and I'm glad you addressed that. That's really to me one of the biggest issues is that when people talk to me, they're like, "Oh, well, I have a nephew who's on the autism spectrum and trying to relate to me, and I appreciate that." But to your point, I think the number one thing that people need to know about the autism spectrum disorder is that. There are no two similar cases. Mm -hmm. Everybody is unbelievably different from one another. So just because you you know of one particular person, that doesn't mean that my son or the the person, your neighbor or something like that is is the same. And and I think that that's really kind of one of the things that I've run into. So so that will be on November twenty second. So faculty and staff listening out there, please make sure that you uh, come to this, and you will certainly see more about this in Student Central and Central Station for more information, or you can reach right out to Tom mm -hmm. for additional information. All right, one more thing that I wanted to talk about before uh, we get ready to end the show. Uh, you've got a big thing going on starting uh, actually the day before this podcast airs on Monday, uh, November the 4th. The morale wall will be kicking off in the ATEC lobby and will be going on for about five weeks mm -hmm. until the closing bonfire ceremony on Tuesday, December 10th at 4 p.m. Can you tell us a little bit about this initiative and uh, how people can participate? Yeah, so this is actually going to be our second time doing this. So we first started this project in the spring of 2019. It was really kind of spearheaded by Lynn Seacrest and Academic Affairs, and it involved a number of offices on campus. So the facilities has done a beautiful job of constructing mobile walls. So for those of you that were here in the spring, you might remember they were like kind of fixed in the ATEC lobby, but Rob and his team have put I they they gave me a sneak preview of it and they're they're beautiful and they're going to be mobile and we're going to be able to set them up at different locations throughout the campus for those of you listening at the Lancaster campus we're going to have the project running concurrently there so you'll be able to participate in that as well and one of the things that will be coming out in student central in week five when this launches is an online submission form so for students that are taking classes on campus or for students that maybe want to participate but physically feel like a little wary about writing about the things that make them hopeful or make them anxious you'll be able to submit the form online all of the submissions will go straight to liz and i and then as we receive them we'll be physically copying them onto cards and affixing them to the wall and we'll be using um, the new central pen app to kind of post updates as we go along so yeah keep your eyes peeled for the link in week five 
so that you can fill it out as you go. I love it. Mm-hmm. The new Central Pen app yeah. is, is making it an appearance here. Um, so again, that will start on Monday, November the 4th. That will go through Tuesday, December the 10th. And then, of course, the bonfire ceremony. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, you know, we, as with any project that we do on campus, the real value is in kind of taking a minute to reflect on the experience. So in order to do that, you kind of got to slow down. Um, so we'll be leading students and staff in a very brief kind of closing ritual. We'll be ceremoniously like lighting everything up in the fire pit. Love it. Um, yeah. And just because, look, the goal of the project is not to magically fix anything because that's not real life. The goal of the project is to get folk to see that they are not the only ones that have to be alone with any of their concerns. One of the biggest pieces of feedback that we got from the spring is the number of people that were just shocked that other people had the same concerns and thoughts that they did. And it just goes to show you how isolating fear can be sometimes. So an initiative like this that just gets people talking instead of staying in their own head with it that's the real value of it. Awesome. Well, before we get out of here, Tom, I have to say that I am honored to be a part of a uh, initiative that you've started and we are going to be working on this month. And it will be uh, a little bit more about some support for some LGBTQ initiatives that you have here on campus. Now, Mainly because I want to know more details okay. for my own personal uh, involvement in this. But tell us a little bit more about this project and if people want to get involved. Sure. So this is something that came about as a result of the college having a relationship with the LGBTQ Center in Harrisburg on 3rd Street. Um, Amanda Arbor, the executive director, she's done programs on campus previously. Um, Megan Peterson, who's the Director of Equity and Multicultural Affairs, is a board member. Um, So myself and Amanda Carter, who's the Director of Youth Training Programs, the LGBT Center already has a podcast series called Out and About. It's sort of kind of been defunct. It's something that they haven't been using, but I'm partnering with her to look at getting stories collected from LGBTQ plus folk across the lifespan and creating a series about how a person's needs and wants on the spectrum change as time progresses. So as part of this initiative, we've actually hosted um, one of the Common Roads groups. Common Roads is a group for high school students that identify as LGBTQ+. We hosted an event on campus. Um, so the Cultural Diversity Center in Bollinger was like overtaken by about like a dozen and a half um, high school students, which was a f- fun experience just to watch. And we taped with some of those students. We had um, a couple of 20-somethings from Project GLOW, which is a um, an element of the LGBT Center that specifically focuses on providing care to LGBTQ plus um, people of color. Um, so they are they were gracious enough to share their stories with Liz and I, and then myself, Dr. Catherine Richards, who's the Director of Student Advising, and Casey Hicks, who's the new appointed Athletics Director. The three of us are actually going to be sharing some of our own stories um, in, a t- in an upcoming taping, and we're currently looking for any Central Penn students that identify um, as LGBTQ plus to look at sharing some of their stories in a taping. So if you are interested in that at all and you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to myself or to Liz to learn more about um, what we're asking. And this is really just an opportunity to kind of share your truth and talk about your experience as a member of the, our community. I have to say, first of all, I'm, I'm honored to be a part of this. When you would ask me, you kind of asked me for some ideas at first. I said, yeah, my first idea is getting you down to the studio <laughs> and recording on some, on some real microphones here. Um, I, I really, but I think that this is great. And I think that the most unique thing about podcasting in a general sense, which I th- certainly think applies here, is that there is no one length of time for a podcast. I just said to myself, hey, I want ours to be about 40 minutes, you know, and, and it, because that's what works for us, you know, mm-hmm. two 20 minute interview segments because we're an interview show. It doesn't, there's not really a prescribed one. I almost think, and again, 
if I'm overstepping my bounds for this suggestion, please forgive me. I think you do each person has sort of their own episode. And if it's 10 minutes, if it's 15, I think that that's actually a good length. Mm-hmm. Because the, the when I teach, uh, I do a lot of research about podcast length. Um, the, the 20 minute is like the perfect sweet spot for a podcast because most the average commute to work, 20 minutes. So that would be something that I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> and I think it's so important to have a podcast for something like this because uh, fortunately I wasn't put in this situation, but um, I know that a lot of people come, especially like Central Penn students, are coming from communities that don't accept them mm-hmm. um, from where they're from. And like I, I'm from Jackson, New Jersey, and I'm from you know, kind of the Jersey Shore. And so it's a little more open. My school is pretty open. Um, So I had a good surrounding amount of people who were supportive of me and what I believed in and what I felt about myself. Um, But I know a lot of people, especially from central Pennsylvania area, um, don't get that. They don't Mm -hmm. get that kind of acceptance and um, the relatability that they can have. So opening a space here on campus, I think, is really important um, so that people can be able to connect with each other who are also on the um, LGBT spectrum. So I think it's awesome. Well, again, I'm so glad to be a part of that. Well, all right. Um, I just, number one, thank you all so much for being here this is i'm in the middle of my my podcast marathon today so i appreciate you coming down here and spending time with me and again i'm going to put your information tom should you have any questions about any of these things how you can get involved number one you can keep an eye on student central or central station but number two you can always reach out to tom or liz for any more information on any of the wonderful things that we talked about from the morale wall to word wednesday to being involved in our new podcast venture to the chair massages to the autism training if you got questions on any of these things please reach out to tom or liz thank you so thank much. you liz yeah before we leave this might be your last time on on our podcast as a, a central pen intern of course you're always welcome to come back in the future and we'd love to have you on again um but thank you very much i i know that uh, you know, starting a new position and, and getting to learn, you know, F, you know, the culture of, of Central Penn College can, can be difficult, but hopefully we didn't scare you off. No, no, <laughs> not at all. I've really enjoyed my time here at Central Penn. And you're not done. Mm-hmm. You will be here through the end of the term. Yes. So certainly if you see Liz between now and then, thank her for uh, coming here and deciding to, to do her internship here, but also wish her well in the future. So I'm going to do that right now, Liz. I wish you well in the future thank after you, you much, complete Paul. your internship. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate and, it. And Janelle, see, that wasn't so bad, was it? No, no, it was torture. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, we certainly <laughs> hope to have you down again soon, and we look forward to your first article articles coming out uh, in the very near future so yeah. uh janelle it's we can't thank you enough for your dedication to the club and we look forward to having you be a part of the nightly news in the for, for the extended future thank you thank you and tom of course it's always a pleasure to have you down here podcast veteran tom palmieri <laughs> you're now getting up into the ranks of uh of the experienced here because there's, there's a handful of people that have been on five but not many I appreciate being in that club, of course. (laughs) All right, well, that's going to do it for another episode of the Nightly News Podcast for Director of Counseling Services, Tom Palmieri, and Counseling Center intern Liz Yoder, and the new member of the Nightly News Media Club, Janelle Dulac. This is Professor Paul Miller, and we'll catch you next time on the Nightly News Podcast. Hey, this is Cy Penthong. Thank you for listening to the Nightly News Podcast. Welcome, everybody, to the Nightly News Podcast. This is Professor Miller, and we are sitting in today with a newbie to our fine podcast. Uh, We're sitting here with Digital Marketing Coordinator Joe Caviston. Joe, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. And today, why we're having Joe on the podcast today is in case you've been living under a rock, you have seen the new centralpen.edu website full of a wide variety of changes, additions, uh, and really just a much more user-friendly experience. So we will definitely be talking about that here in just a moment. Of course, we're also being joined today by Nightly News Secretary Parker Rose. Parker, how many podcasts, if you just had to guess, have you been on thus far? Professor Miller, if I could take a guess, I'm going to say between 15 or 20, if that might be a good guess. Uh, well, so I, I'm, I'm not even really sure at this point, but it seems like you're constantly down here. And of course, we also have our own podcast outside of the nightly news, uh, the Fantasy Football Strategy Guide, which we do monthly, which is a lot of fun. Uh, maybe if we ever have an empty seat, Joe, we can have you down. Maybe you'd like to be on the show. Yeah, big fan of fantasy football. All right, before we get into our discussion about... Um, 
the new website. Joe, I wanted to wish an early congratulations to you. Uh, you're about to be a father on Monday from when we record. I know that the, by this time, uh, the, everything will have been completed, but uh, this is your last day before you, you take a little break and spend some time with your new baby. Yep. Yeah, so we're uh, we're scheduled for induction coming up next week, and uh, very excited about it. That is amazing. Um, you know, I've never had the opportunity. I, I don't have any biological children. I have two ch- stepchildren, uh, and, which I, you know, obviously wasn't there when they were born. But uh, I, you know, I've have a lot of friends who are recent parents, and and just the the look of joy on their face. Hopefully, you take some of that vacation and sleep, because from what I understand, the sleep schedule gets thrown off tremendously. Uh, but I'm sure that that's going to be well well worth that's, everything. Yeah, that's what that's what I'm hearing. Uh, that's all the advice I'm getting is uh, take this weekend, since we have the you know, or fortunately we know when it's going to happen. Right. So it's like uh, we have a weekend coming up. We're going to take it, sleep, get last couple good nights sleep in. Do you know the um, if it's going to be a boy or a girl? It's a boy. <laughs> so uh, hopefully right away you can get him started uh, with the baseball glove or the basketball or whatever, you know, football pads. Oh, he's coming home in a Brady Quinn jersey. <laughs> well, uh, from the Nightly News, we would like to congratulate you on that and certainly wish you well with your limited amounts of sleep coming up. <laughs> Thank you. So when you see Joe again, certainly wish him congratulations. Well, Joe, why you're here today is centralpen.edu underwent over the last couple of months a significant overhaul with an unbelievable amount of changes, optimizations, making it a more user-friendly experience, and something you mentioned, mobile first as, as opposed to mobile friendly. Let's start there. What are the differences there between mobile first and mobile friendly? So uh, mo- mobile first is Google's new designation, meaning that your site was built specifically for mobile capabilities so that it works unilaterally perfectly across all devices. So mobile has evolved in the last years over, from not just your phone, but to tablets, to smart TVs, to everything of that nature. As of September 1st, Google um, it changed their algorithm again. And you're penalized if you have a, only a mobile friendly and not a, a mobile first website, meaning that they want it to operate perfectly in a mobile setting first, which 80% of the web's traffic now comes from mobile devices. So it makes sense to an extent, but they never tell you exactly how to do that. You know, they just kind of roll it out. Luckily, it's not like the 2008 Panda disaster where they changed all of uh, search engines and like everybody lost their jobs overnight but well you know we both work it, it to a certain extent in social in the social media world there is nothing worse than algorithm changes into because i'll give you a perfect example you know you're used to doing one specific thing around trying to get an engagement and then all of a sudden these algorithms shift and then you know, unless you are really with your, you know, ear to the to ground on these types of things, you're kind of left behind. And uh, I know that that's got to be extremely problematic for you. But I'm sure that then again, you also follow a lot of the, you know, industry talk and, and they can talk about that. And also, I, I as much as as little as I like to say good things about Google or Facebook, I do think that for the most part, they do an okay job on letting us know about these things and letting us make changes. Yeah, Google has gotten a lot better. Um, like I said, I think it was like 2008 or 2009, I was working in digital media then and um, was in charge of a, a multi-million dollar company's uh, social media. And my um, philosophy was always good content first and strong content and, and making sure that stood on its own. But that was the time when like you could stuff a page with keywords and just rank number one in Google. You just like make the text white at the bottom and type all the words you want to, you know, over and over. And it worked for a long time. And a lot of people made a lot of money off that, and companies were based on that, you know, just optimizing these pages. Well, uh, Panda rolled out, which was the new Google algorithm then, and, like, overnight you saw, like, websites that completely relied on web traffic for sales and things of that nature fall off the face of the earth, um, and we stayed ranked. You know, it was nice because we just always concentrated on, it was a window and door company, so it was, we make the best windows and doors, and uh, we always push that forward with customer testimonials and everything, and that's what Google wanted at that point because they're moving more towards their news oriented as they are now. So it ended up working. So since then, I think Google realized we need to to be a little more forefront. So they they did give about a 3 month window where they were like, "Hey, like this is coming, so make sure your website works." Um so luckily that was right when we were starting our RFI process and uh we were very specific with all applicants uh who were going to design the website for us. This has to work on a phone first and it has to be perfect on the phone as it is on the desktop and it has to look good 
and function properly on all spectrums. That's awesome. Uh, so one of the things that you wanted uh, me to, to make special highlight of was about the shift in the user experience and how the this whole entire website really is optimized for the user experience. Tell me what that means. So a lot of it is things that you might not even as a user realize, but a lot of thought was put in in the back end to make sure that you can navigate the site properly, that you easily find the information you want. It's kind of the thought of a funnel. So you start on the tile high level and funnel down to a point of either contact or the final information you're looking for. And the old site was great, but it was designed in 2008. It was a whole different world then. You sure. know, everybody was using a desktop and they were navigating that way. So right now we want to know, like, how do we get you to where you want to be on that website in less than three clicks, two clicks if possible, from any point in the entire website? A lot of that is, you know, a great search function, which as everybody who designs a website knows that search functions are, are the rule of anybody's internal website's existence, you know? So how do we make that work properly? How do we design the pages that people are going to be searching for so that it makes the search easier? How do we provide the right links on the page to get you? So if you're on page A and maybe you're trying to get the information on page B, like how do we get you there as quickly and as easily as possible? Awesome. You know, one of the things that you can just tell right off the bat, so if, you know, I'm just going to pull this off, at the very top of the screen on centralpen.edu, there's a really cool video. And one of the things that you'd, you'd also mentioned is how proud you were that it prominently features students. Parker, this is where I want to bring you in here. Parker, you were involved in the video shoot for not only just the website, but Joe, and we can chat about this in a minute, uh, some additional uh, new commercials featuring our students. So can you tell me a little bit more about the day that you got to work with the the, the marketing team that was here on campus? It, it was it was a very fun experience to uh, be a part of that, to uh, show of how the student culture and how we do things here at Central Penn College and to be able to, when I seen the new website for the first time, when I was actually at a uh, business thing, uh, a speaker came in from for business, and the new website came up, and I saw some pictures of me, and all from like the club fair, from the outside of the whole atmosphere, the quad and all. Just being a part of that could show like new future nights that want to come in that they're looking at the website. They're like make them feel welcome on the new website, and to demonstrate that to bring in our student body to improve our students on campus is amazing. Parker, have you ever been on in a television commercial or anything like that before? I mean, I know that you're used to like doing the night way and you're, you're here on the podcast. So to you, this is probably just nothing out of the ordinary. But tell me a little bit more about the day itself and, and how they worked with the students who probably didn't have a whole lot of experience. I Like you said, I have been on t television before. So I've been interviewed by the news many times. I'll be any back home, which is the local station back home. All you got to do is be yourself, honestly, on it. Like, don't you got you just act like that the camera's not there. Like just continue with going with your day. The camera you'll hear the click, but just don't pay no attention to it. Like a lot of people come to me and say, How do you be, how do you how are you so calm when it comes to these filming? I said, It's quite simple. Just be yourself. Well, number one, you you have some experience now. So and, and you'd even mentioned on previous shows that being on the podcast has helped you do and parlay into other things in front of the camera. So I think that that's really unique. Uh, and I look forward to seeing uh, a, a future commercial or, or see it around the website. Joe, I want to talk to you about some of the new commercials that uh, people can and will be seeing in the future. Um, how do you go about and what is the process for, for putting these commercials together? One of our biggest values at Central Penn and our collateral are our students. And, and our students are so unique and our population is so unique that their stories are, are so unique and they're so incredible. Any student you talk to here has a unique, interesting story. So what we kind of did was we first we reached out and we said, uh, you know, we sent, sent around um, surveys. We did, did a marketing survey campus wide and also to our alumni. And we said, you know, who are some students that have interesting stories that you would think? And then we also sent that to professors internally and everything we took recommendations and and we really boiled it down you know we said these are which which you do with anything like these are our key audiences that we need to reach so these are the the over overarching you know stories that we we want to tell as far as like this population of students we need to appeal to them so then we identified the stories and and we had some some really interesting strong candidates and then, but then it's like how do you boil that amazing story down to 30 seconds right. for for air and um I'm really really proud of what the whole team, you know, um, that, that was a full marketing effort of what everybody came together and, and, and came up with those um, creative commercials. And I especially really like um, the traditional spot with Nada. 
I think it, it, it's just like really grabs you. And, and even we've cut them now down for social and for YouTube to 15 second ads. And even in the 15 seconds, like they stand up and the visuals are great, but you connect with the people and, and everybody was so natural because we weren't having actors act out a false narrative. These are these people's real life Absolutely. stories. And everybody here has a story, which I think is, is one of the coolest things about my job is, is telling those stories, be it on Facebook, be it on an Instagram story, the commercials, however it is, we're telling those stories. And, and I think that makes us very relatable as a college. So Nada Shalal was one of the individuals who did a, a commercial about. Who were some of the other commercials? Nada Shalal, it was our traditional spot, which um, you know tells the story of her moving on to campus and then um, preparing to graduate and, and becoming involved on campus and, and joining the soccer team, things of that nature. Uh, Joshua Ash who actually used to work at the college, yep. um, but was a graduate before he worked here and now has been working internationally in marketing and things of that nature. Um, but it's also has a, a very unique story of being a, a, you know, a single dad and then, then marrying and, and having these children and, and balancing his life um, while doing online schooling and on campus, but working a full-time job. And then we also, uh, the other two names off the top of my head are, are eluding me, but we had um, the story of a single mom who found us and... Um, she did her degree online fully, but then took advantage of the really unique opportunities. Uh, Meta Sutton was her name. And uh, she, she took advantage of the on-campus opportunities. She was in plays, and she would come here and meet with career services and, and took full, the full college experience, but was able to take classes that would fit into her schedule by doing it fully online. And then um, the, the final commercial um, was of a student who worked in the healthcare field and had kind of reached the the as far as she could go with her education that she had at the time and then was able to come here get a healthcare management degree and move forward and advance in her career to a management position and is still being you know promoted within the company because of that central pen degree back to what you were saying about the online student who was utilizing the on-campus facilities one thing, in, uh, so I teach COM 101 online at least one section every term, and the very first question that I ask them in that class is, why are you here? Why did you come to Central Penn College? And I got to tell you, overwhelmingly, the majority of the people have so say something along these lines. I wanted to come here because, A, wide range of different types of classes. So if I if I need to take a day class or an evening class or an online class, I can do that. But secondly, I wanted to go to a local school. And even though, yes, I am online, I can still get there. I can still meet with my advisor. I can speak with my faculty members. I can work with the counseling center. I can work with the learning center. And that is, is what I think is really appealing to a lot of our online students is, yes, m maybe they are going online, but they have that support locally that if they need, that they can take advantage of that at any point. Which I think uh, makes us very unique. We, we're, we're a college. We're a traditional college. We have a campus. We're here. But we offer online. So we're, we're a college who offers online schooling as opposed to an online school. Right. Where you have a lot of the rules have changed as far as marketing college in the last couple of years. So you're seeing on TV everywhere now or on billboards or, or online where you used to not be able to market outside your state really. Now you're completely open. Right. You know, unless you had a physical location in that state. That's why you used to see the little little campuses everywhere, but now anybody can market anywhere. So you're, you're, you're seeing, especially in this market, because Cumberland Valley is so fast growing and, and it's one of the fastest growing counties in, in, in the country, mm -hmm. not only the state. So you're seeing a lot of people coming in here, uh, bigger, you know, national brands, so to speak, really come in here. But Central Penn, on the other hand, is known. We've been here since 1881. We're not going anywhere. They know they can come to this campus if they want to find these resources. But we're still offering the convenience of taking online classes where we'll work around your schedule as opposed to, you know, somebody – it's hard to, to get to a classroom in, you know, the, the Phoenix desert, you right. know, if, if you need to – that extra support. Now, Parker, obviously, you are an on-campus student. You live here on campus. You take a lot of your classes on campus, but you've taken online classes before, right? Yes, I have. And what advantage does that have, even for a traditional student, to just have that option to take it online? How has that maybe changed your, your daily schedule when you have those online classes? At first, when I first came to Central Penn, I was a person struggling. With, I don't want to take any online classes because I I'm a person that hears from opinions and grapevines from people say, "Oh, online are hard." This and that. 
So when it came down to I had to take an online class, I had no choice. I'm like, okay. And I realized how much easier online classes are. It opens up so much on your daytime schedule to be able to work on other assignments. Like right now, this term, I have an online class right now. And having the folder open at Sunday, you could work at your own pace online. Like I feel like in an on-ground class, you, you are held to only working on certain things because me with an accounting class, it's Tuesdays and Thursdays. Right. I feel like I only do a certain amount of work from Tuesday's class. That, th- that's an interesting perspective, Parker. While online, all the materials are open. So I could, if I really wanted to, and I do this because I'm a person who likes to get done ahead. I do all my online class assignments within the first two days, the folders open. You're, you're definitely in the minority there. But that, but of course, that, that has to do with the fact that a lot of people are working nine to five. You know, that they, they, they have their weekend time to do their work. But Parker, I got to tell you something that uh, that is definitely an interesting thought. And um, it does take a, a motivated student. And, and I'll, I will tell you, Parker, that is one of the sort of misnomers that, that I kind of like to put out there is, is there, I've heard just people saying, oh, online's easier. And I'm going to take an online class because it's going to be easier. Me personally, for someone who who teaches usually at least half of their load online, I'm going to tell you right now, I do not believe that to be the case. In fact, I would argue that online might actually be somewhat more challenging because you really have to not only be able to motivate yourself to complete the work, but you also have to be really good at time management. So there are definitely pluses and minuses. Um, to but but the best thing about this, Joe, is that we are able to offer we are able to offer day classes, evening classes, and online classes for students to find what's going to work best for them. If they've identified, I don't want to take classes online, guess what? We have day and evening classes. If maybe you want to take nine credits, but only two of the classes are you're, you're needing are, are in the evenings, you can take it a, an online class to supplement that. So I think that that's unbelievably unique about our college. I think it's it's extremely unique. And, and another thing I think is interesting, so like I, I had mentioned earlier, is I come from a, a, a product marketing, um, manufacturing marketing background. One of my old boss's favorite line was, all marketers are liars. Well, in higher ed, ethical marketing is so strong, and you're regulated into it. You know, um, And you hear a lot of this talk of online classes being easy, the ease of online. Our, one of our slogans in, for Central Penn is, it's not going to be easy, but we're here to help you. We'll provide you with the things. But like we come right out and say, like, this isn't going to be easy. It's going to be the hardest thing you ever do in your life and that um commercial with josh at the end of it like that's what he said mm-hmm. he's like this is the hardest thing i ever did but it was worth it because now i have this degree to advance in my career to help my family to do this you know so that's that's a lot of what we try to strive for is is the real factor and then also the truth of it like we're not gonna sugarcoat it for you like it's gonna be hard but you know you'll be able to get through it and if you need that extra help we're here and have the services to help you what's unique about what you do and uh- others on your marketing team, we don't need to lie. All the stories are around us every single day, whether it's Parker or Nada or Brian or, you know, other members of our club or other, you know, people who I might never even meet throughout their whole time here. We have nothing but stories. Everyone, every one of our students has a story about how they ended up here. And and certainly all of our graduates have a story about the impact that Central Penn College had. So, hey, before we get out of here, just one more quick thing that I want to point out. You've got something new that you've been working on over the past couple of terms, and that's students at Central. Pen. You've developed some new social media accounts that are being kind of taken over by students to kind of give you that day in the life of a student. Tell us a little bit more about where this came from and, and how uh, our listeners can engage. Yeah. So, I mean, this this idea was birthed through the process of the website. So when we were on the website, it was like, hey, it would be really awesome if we could have a student directly talk to a potential student. Well, it's kind of hard to have a student like work our chat feature or respond to requests for information or applications or things like that, um, especially with the accelerated terms that we have here. But social media would be a great way to, to, to utilize that. So what we've done is we've created a Twitter account and a Facebook group that are controlled. I mean, I monitor it from a, from a high level, but the content that's being produced is by students. Um, and any student that's interested can contact us in the marketing department. My email is josephcavson at, at centralpen.edu. It's not only one student. There's multiple students who we identify as admins. And they run those accounts, and they kind of give you a look at their life and their campus life or 
we have online students and CE students that are involved too. So they're telling you like, I'm at work today, but over my lunch break, I'm doing this project. They're giving you an idea of what their life as a student is. And then you can reach out to them and they can answer your questions directly. So you have a question from them. It's one thing for an admissions counselor or an advisor or me or you or anybody to talk to them. But what's a real student's perspective and how do they give you that? Um, And that was a lot of what we, you know, obviously testimonials are great, but you're reading it on a piece of paper. Like We heard from a lot of potential students that the the new, they're like, yeah, you could tell me that. But like, let me talk to somebody who did it, you know, like or somebody that's doing it. And I want their perspective. So that was the idea behind the students at Central Penn account. And it's been going really well. And we're pretty excited about it and have plans to ex, um, extend it into a YouTube channel. Awesome. How can, if people are interested in following that, how can they find that students at Central Penn page? Um, so on Twitter, it's students at CPC. On, and then on Facebook, it is students at Central Penn. Awesome. Um, it's a Facebook group, not a page. So um, you can search for it or you can go to our Facebook page. And then as you scroll down right on the bottom, it's... Uh, it's, it's under groups. It's prominently featured on our main page. Just a couple of events that uh, Joe wanted me to make sure that I let everybody know about. We have uh, b- several big events coming up in late November and middle of December as well. Um, November 20th is OTA Day. So you can come here and get more information about what an OTA, uh, an occupational therapy assistant does, more uh, info about their career field, get to meet the faculty. So that's always a big day every single year. That's uh, November 20th. On November 21st is a very interesting uh, panel. Uh, It's called Our Success is Your Success. This will be down at our Lancaster Center of Central Penn College, and we will be hosting a panel of uh, six Lancaster graduates. Joe, do you want to chat about that for a minute? Yeah, it's it's a really fun event. Uh, Carol Glass, our Lancaster admissions counselor, is is heading that up, and uh, she's she's reached out and she's bringing in six successful Lancaster graduates. And they're going to just talk about how they balance their life because most of them were working adults. So how do they balance life and going to college and how do they get through that? And finally, we have Second Saturday. This is December 14th. Uh, This is the last opportunity in 2019 for students to come here, engage, and fill out applications, meet with financial aid uh, individuals, counts, uh, counselors, etc. cetera. Uh, so please make sure if you want to try to get that application in before the end of the year, make sure you make plans to come to Second Saturday. It's December 14th. Well, Joe, that was fantastic. We've got the new website. We've got the students at Central Penn. Parker is a star on TV. I just saw Nada's commercial while I was watching Seinfeld. I mean, the, the things seem to be going very well in your office, and we thank you for everything that you do. We're enjoying it, and like I said, it's all about the stories of our students here. That's going to do it for another episode of the Nightly News Podcast. I just want to thank Joe Capston. Joe, thank you so much for coming down. Thank you. And best of luck on the baby coming up. Coming quick. And of course... Nightly News Secretary Parker Rose, thank you very much for joining us here, my friend. It's great to always be on the podcast. And we're going to keep an eye out for you and where you, it's almost like a, we're going to call it like, instead of where's Waldo, where's Parker on the website and in these commercials. So keep an eye out for Parker on there. Um, All right, that's going to be it for another episode of the Nightly News Podcast. We'll see you again next time. (laughs)